Uh, there was a great spirit of error sweeping the land. It's always been there, but it seems like it's increased. And uh, the spirit of truth, I'm going to share it over here. The spirit of truth is when I found my dear wife, Janice. Would you stand, sweetheart? <laughs> Yes. Oh, 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 oh. 56 years. She needs to give her a hand. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. My mind went blank. You sit down, young lady. <laughs> yes. I walked, she walked into my parents' restaurant, and uh, I was standing with my mother. It was August 5th. Uh, well, no, no. It was when I just got out of the military. Uh, the Navy, and uh, I came back, and my parents brought me into the restaurant, and she came in for an afternoon Coke, and she, as she walked through the door, this was not on my mind. I was, I had hair. I was going places. And she walked through the door, and I said to my mother, I said, Mom, see that girl? That's the girl I'm going to marry. And my mother said, what? <laughs> I said, that's the girl I'm going to marry. And two years later, we tied the knot, and it was in August 5th, 1967, uh, in the, the city of Chicago. Got married by the Justice of the Peace. I don't recommend that. I think you should get married with family and friends, but it worked out that way. That's another whole story. And, uh, but uh, I know, I remember the judge standing up there and he was reading a newspaper, probably the funnies. And he kind of, he was kind of looking at us and waiting for us to get situated. And I said, I do, I do, I do. <laughs> and he said, son, settle down. I haven't settled down. <laughs> and so we got married and uh, uh, we've had a, a marvelous journey. And through it all, Christ has carried us. Amen. And he's blessed us abundantly because we put God first in our lives. Yes. Now, I wasn't a Christian at the time. Janice, uh, she was a Christian, and uh, she had uh, kind of, she drifted off. I'll be nice about it. A nice? Yes. And uh, she, because uh, she married me. <laughs> she was drifting, but God brought her back. And she was seeking more of God in her life. And, uh, I encourage you to go ahead, go seek out God or whatever. Just leave me alone. <laughs> Don't bring that to me. I, I'm, I'm fine. I wasn't fine. And then uh, one day, uh, in a UPS truck, after hearing people talk about God and about Jesus and how we need to make a commitment, we need to confess with our mouth, just like I confessed before that judge. Yes, I love her. I'll take her as my wife. And and so forth in all the days of my life uh, and I understood by revelation God came into that UPS truck and filled me with the spirit and he says son today is the day of salvation what are you going to say and I said yes Lord yes Lord whatever you want me to do I will do it I will follow you all the days of my life the next pickup station I went to was, this was in Elk Grove, Illinois. It was a Jewish neighborhood. And uh, I walked in and the lady was standing behind the counter. And I said, Jesus Christ is my Savior and my Lord and he's coming back. She took two steps back and she said, what? I said, Jesus Christ is my Savior and my Lord and he's coming back. And then I went to the back of the, the facility and as I opened the door, this guy walked up because I had been asking questions. Is God real? Does God do miracles today? And so forth. And this guy walks up and he said, well, Rabbi, how you doing? <laughs> I had no idea what that meant. But Rabbi means teacher. That he was prophesying that God was going to use me to tell others about Jesus. Along with being in ministry for 47 years, I spent 40 years in the state prison with 12 other men preaching the gospel. And it's been exciting, it's been interesting, and praise God, I'm going on. And then 
the church here called me out of out of retirement. I wasn't really retired. <laughs> I have age, but I have strength, yes. like Samson. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, in a nutshell, that's that's part of it. And uh, Jan and I, uh, uh, I tried to every night, just every night. We, I even put a plaque above our bed. Don't forget to kiss me goodnight. And uh, we end our evening, and we, we, you know, the best thing about uh, a marriage, you need to communicate with one another. You need to talk. And I'm blessed to have a woman I can talk to about Jesus. Uh, my whole family and her family, they thought I lost my mind. They wanted me to get saved and just come to church and sit in the chairs and just listen. I got me a megaphone and I went around, repent. Time is close. Jesus is coming back. And she, Janice said, oh boy. And her family. One thing about her mother, and uh, her, the first time she brought me home to introduce me to her parents, her mother was standing at the kitchen sink, her name was Helen, wonderful lady, singing Amazing Grace. And of course, I wasn't in that grace at that time, and I thought, what kind of family is this? <laughs> They're singing in what she's doing dishes. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. You know, I'm very, you're not very supportive. <laughs> All right, if you have your Bibles, please open your Bibles to the Epistle of 1 John, chapter 4. We're going through 1 John. And if I could also say this, uh, that uh, the, what is the theme of this uh, lesson, uh, First John? Uh, the theme is you can know. You can know that you're saved. You can know who you are in Christ. And uh, see, I get a lot of things going on up here. I mean, good thing you're not in my mind. But here's what I felt that the Lord gave for someone or all of you once again. And from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, you can look this up uh, later, and here's what it reads. However, we speak the wisdom among those who are mature, and yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. You better believe that. That's true. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, now hear that, as it is written, the importance of God's word, as it is written, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. You want to make points with your wife or your husband? I love you, honey. I love you. You know, we've been married 56 years, and I still went out and I bought her a nice bouquet of flowers. And the, she's picked up a lot for me. She split them up, and she put them all around the house. <laughs> and uh, just to say how much I appreciate her, uh, words can't even explain. You know, was her prayers and her her knowing that God was going to bring us together and make us one uh, in our spiritual life together. I am so thankful because she has a love for God uh, and I, I just thank God that uh, that's exactly what I need. What do you need? So it you know, goes on to say, prepare for those who love Him. Uh, but God has revealed them to us through His Spirit for the Spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. And so it's a good reading. Uh, I would encourage you to read it in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Write it down. Uh, I know in my own life, over the years, uh, in Romans 10, 17, it says, Faith comes by what? Hearing. And hearing the Word of God. A lot of times I like to hear and just sit there and listen. Jan has always been a note taker. I noticed some, some of you out there, you also are note takers. That's good. I'll go back and read it over again. 
I'll meditate on it. I'll think about it. How does this apply to my life? I'm a hands-on guy. I like to show me something and not let get out of my way. I'm going to do it. And uh, so God has been gracious in helping me in my journey. I have a love for God's Word. It's most important that I uh, continue to renew my mind. As Paul said in Romans chapter uh, 12, 1 and 2, I beseech you for it, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. And that's what we're talking about today. The world is wanting your attention. Want, come this way. Come this way. And God says, no, follow me. Follow my voice. Follow my word. And you will overcome. And you will be great in my kingdom. That we will prove what is the acceptable and perfect will of God. Can you know the will of God? Absolutely. Absolutely. God's word is true and it will not pass away, but it will accomplish all that he sent it to do. All right. Back to, um, uh, we have some visitors and maybe they're more free than some of you. You shouldn't be. You all should be free in Christ. Amen? Amen. The sun sets free, it's free indeed. Amen? Yeah. Yes. And what I'm going for is amen. Amen? Amen. 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 Or I may draw, draw you into my uh, presentation here because you need to respond. By your words you will be justified and by your own words you will be condemned. Jesus said, if you will confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father and the angels in heaven. Oh, praise God. Amen. Praise God. Yes. And uh, so, uh, you can't overdose on the things of God. Uh, we started out with our lesson in 1 John chapter 4, and it says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. <clears throat> and by this you will know the Spirit of God, to every spirit that confesses that Jesus is Christ, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, is of God. Now, they may not say it directly out and say, well, I confess Jesus has come in the flesh. But by their conversation, how when you get together with different people, you can tell what's in their heart. Uh, what's coming out? Is there there's hope and assurance and confidence and in their destiny, or is there doubt in all the world falling apart? Let it fall apart, because there's a greater kingdom coming, and we're looking forward to the coming of Christ. Amen. And so we go on in this thought here, and it says, we are called, the Bible tells us we are called neither to be ignorant, nor overboard, or extreme about the spiritual forces of evil that are at hand. We are to recognize them for what they are. That doesn't mean we have to be nasty or anything, but we know we need to remember from uh, our lesson here in 4.4, four, uh, four, I believe, uh, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And I know that God is in me. He's, he's, I'm born again. My spirit is united with his spirit. And so with that in mind, I, I can move forward in Jesus' name. If you deny the power of, of darkness, what are you doing? You're denying the, the very words that Christ spoke and Paul and John and others about there, there will come dark times. And uh, the Bible tells us to be ready and be, be knowing that what are we dealing with. Well, that brings us to our next part of we're going, we're going to go over to Ephesians chapter 6. That's going towards uh, the back of the Bible. If you're not familiar, Ephesians chapter 6. And this is the part where I said uh, in our title here, the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. error. And that uh, the spirit of error, how does it manifest? How does it come? Uh, uh, and so uh, Paul addresses that. And so we're going to be talking about both the flesh and the devil, because they seem to work hand in hand 
Uh, the devil can't just come into your life and let you open the doorway. What are you thinking of? What are you looking at? Uh, all these things can contribute to uh, a wrong thinking. Uh, it says we're to think on things that are from above and things that are edifying and will build you up. And you have a responsibility to take this handbook and apply it to your life. Uh, the Bible says, for example, when the devil comes, it tells us to resist the devil and he will flee. He said, you resist the devil and he will flee. Uh, he will flee and draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Now, there was a time I didn't want to draw near to God. I gave myself over to my flesh. But I thank, I thank God that the blood of Jesus has cleansed me and made me whole. Uh, Jesus said, the kingdom of God is at hand, and it must be taken by force. And uh, uh, Satan wants to stop us or bring things into our life that will distract us from, from fulfilling God's call to enter the kingdom of God in Christ. And so be aware of his tactics. Paul says here in, in uh, Ephesians 6, uh, verse 10, if you're there, say amen. 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 Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. So he's not saying you don't have to fight this alone. I'm with you. I'm in your corner. And uh, my question to you, are you being strong in the Lord? How do you get strong? Well, by the renewing of your mind, by thinking on the things of God, by praying continually, thanking God for His, His presence to your life, you don't take it for granted. And uh, listening to counsel, as Dave was saying, he could have avoided that cut on his wrist. I, I can identify with that. <laughs> but not listening to counsel, and it could cost you. And, uh, and I've also, also heard counsel from my wife. When I was doing things, and she said, you're a dummy. <laughs> you can hire someone to do that. Oh, it's only going to take a moment. The next thing I know, I'm on a helicopter. I'm having a heart attack. <laughs> and uh, they gave me some drugs. I have never been on drugs, but I'll tell you, those were pretty good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, they flew me down to Wausau, took me off the helicopter, ripping my clothes off, and uh, they were trying to uh, go put a stent up through my groin. And uh, so they could do one or two, and then they stopped and they said, uh, Mr. Grable, uh, we can't get the third one up. We're going to have to take you in our, in, into surgery. And I thought, this is open for discussion? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, they took, yeah, evidently I turned out all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. And uh, I'm breathing, I'm upright, and uh, I'm going forward for Jesus. And I thank the Lord. There's lessons to be learned there. And uh, uh, so I thank the Lord that he brought us through there. And I should have listened to my wife. Oh, I did listen to you. <laughs> you said, you're going up to the hospital. And she said, there was a look on your face that I said, we're going up to Grandview. And I, oh, just let me rest. Give me a bottle of water. I'll be fine. <laughs> no. I said, okay. And she got me up there. She saved my life. Thank you. Thank you for my wife. You saved me my life. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. So, uh, we're called to, by the word of God, to be searching the scriptures. That which That is what will make us strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Now, you can do a lot of things in your own understanding, and you can go to school and, and get some understanding in that realm, and that's fine. That's not discouraging that. But don't ever exclude God out of your life in any realm. Bring God into your life. Purpose in your heart and in your life that you're going to follow Him. You're going to give priority to your walk with Him. We do not stand alone. Uh, in, the, in our reading here over in John, uh, it talks about that 
I, I have to go there. Uh, first John uh, 3, 24. If someone's there, say amen. amen. You're there. You don't you want to do that. I may call on you. All right, here we go. Now, 24. Now, he who keeps his commandments abides in him. Do you hear that? The instruction? He who keeps his commandments abides in him. Um, where did it go? Okay. Uh, abides in him and he in him. And by this we know that he abides in us by the Spirit whom he has given us. Praise God. And so he has given us his Spirit and uh, that's we know that we have his strength and he is abiding in us. Uh, starting at verse 10 there it says, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Now, do you hear that as instructions? Put on. You put on. I must put on uh, the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. And so, uh, putting on that armor, we understand that we are protected, that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the schemes of the devil. In Colossians 2.8, it says, beware lest anyone cheat you or meaning plunder or take you captive, uh, cheat you through philosophies and empty deceits according to the traditions of men and not according to the basic principles of the world and not according to Christ. Christ is the focal point of our Christian walk. Amen? Amen. He, he's, he is with us, encourages, encouraging us on. The more of the word you get into yourself, and the more you begin to talk, you talk to yourself now. I'm sure. Before I got saved, I was talking to myself all the time. Go this way, go that way. And I was going nowhere. When I got Christ in my life, at least I had a co-pilot, and I knew where I was going. Praise God. Uh, and so, uh, I, I, I realized that I am a new man in Christ. Uh, teach you through philosophies and empty deceits, according to the traditions of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. For we, we do not, again, I'm going to repeat this, we do not wrestle uh, against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Uh, and so our homework this week will be, I, want, I would like to have you zero in on this portion of Scripture, 10 through 20, and just really meditate on how does that apply to my life and putting the armor on. And so, uh, as he goes on here, there are spiritual forces that we can't see them with the natural eye, but they're at work daily in our lives. Uh, turn on the TV and you can probably see a lot of them. Uh, some of the movies that they come up with today really plant uh, thoughts in your mind and then you try to renew your mind with the Word of God and there's a spiritual battle going on between you and the things uh, that you see on that TV. Uh, let's continue on here. Therefore, for verse 13, Therefore, Take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Having done all to stand, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Now he points right to the Word of God again. Uh, when I was in the military, I can just take a little break here. They give us a, a manual 
uh, it was called the Blue Jacket Manual when I was in the Navy. And then I joined the Army, finished out my time uh, in service, and they gave us what is called an STP-21. Uh, now why I remember that. I know why I remember my service member, 585-4876. And you say, why do you remember that? Because if you didn't know it when you were in the chow line, you go to the end of the chow line. I only had to go to the end one time, and it wasn't 25 people. It was companies go all the way to the end, and I was memorizing my service number. Do you know your Social Security number? There's yes. times you need to kind of yes. put it out there. And uh, so uh, those things can be brought into your life, and they have a, a reason. And, uh, uh, oh, the reason I was brought that up, when we had downtime, like you're resting or you're not doing something in the driving your lawnmower or whatever, we would open our handbooks and we would read certain sections so that we were equipped and ready for our, our service in whatever way we were called. And uh, just like in a car, you see, you hear what Dave said, I could have called Jerry. He could have taken the shortcut. He could have listened to his son, but he was younger because he was his son. And my son told me some things just recently. I have hornets in my shed. And he said, Dad, don't go near them. <laughs> and especially not on your lawnmower. I drove up on my lawnmower and these hornets said, you don't come here. And they attacked me and I had bit on my lip and I'm on my finger and I ran, yeah. She said, put an ice cube on it. Quit your moaning. She was a good woman. She took care of me. And so, uh, listening to the counsel of people or like your car, if you have a, a vehicle, they have a handbook in there that helps you. If you have many other things, a microwave, they say, here's a handbook, this is how it operates. You don't use a microwave as a timer. <laughs> <laughs> What's smoking? <laughs> Why is the microwave on fire? I don't know, I was just using it as a timer. That's a no-no. And so there are warnings in the Bible. If you will listen to them, you will avoid problems. Right? Yeah. Amen. And, uh, you know, somebody said, well, how do, you, how do you remember all these scriptures? Because I go over those things. Over and over. The, and, and I appreciate your text from time to time. And I will text you back because it makes me search the scriptures. I benefit from exercising my faith. Spiritual exercise profited much. Physical exercise profited little. Now, when I was a young man, how much time do I have? Oh, uh, you can see I didn't work out too much. I'm working out now, but not much. I am working on renewing my mind, and that's what you should be doing. And uh, next week, we're going to go over your armor and uh, how to defeat the devil. Uh, there's uh, eight areas that you need to consider. But if you would, I'm asking you to read this text here in uh, Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 20. Uh, you can have a better understanding when I begin to open the thoughts of the breastplate, the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith. Uh, and there are, there's so much to be learned from understanding about the garment. But uh, fear not. God uh, is on your side. And I'm going to give you a scripture that uh, some of you probably have never seen. But if you don't believe it, it's not going to be activated in your life. 2 Thessalonians 3.3. 3. But the Lord is faithful. Say that. The Lord is faithful. Who will establish you. Who will establish you. Some of you believe it. Some of you don't. Who will establish you. 
and guard you from the evil one. Do you believe? You can say, oh Lord, help me. He says, help yourself. Put on the armor. Stand up, resist the devil, and he will flee. Cast all your cares on me, for I care for you. Amen. My daughter, she's talking to me now. Tell me, Dad, don't be a whiner. <laughs> Dad, come on. Take my buy or something. I'll tell you what, the most the greatest investment you can make is an investment in the word of God. Amen? Amen. An investment in knowing who you are. Now, up to now, in uh, the epistle of 1 John, I believe there's about uh, 15 or 20 no, you can know. When someone says you can't know if you're saved, I disagree. The Bible says you can know who you are in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen? I know that I know. I was a sinner, but I've been saved by grace, by faith in Jesus Christ. And I have decided I'm going to follow Jesus. Amen. And I'm going to talk about Jesus. I have Bibles on me. I just bought a whole stack of tracts to hand out. I'm just looking for people just to come by me and not knowing what they're going to get into. <laughs> I, hey, listen, it works. I had these little Bibles and there was two little kids standing outside of the restaurant and I had taken this fellow, we went for breakfast together, he was up at the counter paying the bill and I said, here, I gave him the, uh, each a Bible and this kid had all kinds of hair. Well, that's what I used to have. And I told him, I used to have hair like you. And he probably said, so what? <laughs> you don't have it now. So then I went back in to get my friend and uh, his grandmother had come out and said, oh, you're talking to my grandkids. When she had to get her checkbook. She came back in, and uh, John was up there trying to pay the bill, and she said, put his bill on my ticket. John said, what? Now, we're Christians. We're supposed to be able to give, but it's hard sometimes to receive. I said, John, and he was complaining, what? You don't have to buy my, my, my breakfast. I said, John, just say thank you. <laughs> And we got into the car and he said, why did she do that? Oh, John, she just, she's a Christian. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you see people, buy their breakfast. Buy, do something good to them. Encourage them. Say, how are you doing? You know, and if they say, life is just miserable. Can I pray for you? The power of prayer can change a life. Mm -hmm. Or a happy smile. Remember, when we leave here today, we don't leave here looking like a prune. We <laughs> look happy. I heard the message. I heard the songs. I heard that poor Dave cut his arm. <laughs> and uh, be happy about your faith and your. Hey, you're going to heaven. You say, but the world's coming to the end. Jesus said it was going to come to the end. When you see lawlessness increasing, rejoice for your redemption draweth not. Amen. Okay, let's have a closing closing prayer. You would. Uh, Bow your heads and the music department can come up. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, exceedingly, abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. And everyone said, Amen. Amen.